Mashramani, as you probably have heard, started with that title in 1971. Actually, it was started by the JCs of Linden in 1970, and it was more or less adopted by the government as a national thing in 1971. It is our big coming together. Mashramani, as you probably know, an Amerindian term, which is say means uh, revelry after a cooperative effort. We've had a cooperative effort in the past year, and in February, at the time of our Republic, celebration of the Republic, we uh, have a big celebration. That's basically what it is. We tramp in the streets, we have masquerade bands, beauty contest, uh, fashion costume contests, I should say, Indian bands competition, everything that's going on. So this is the time for festivity. Who is the best steel band? Yeah. Who can win? Yeah. Very, very hard. We put in about this competition time, we put in about eight hours a day practice. And it takes a lot out of the players. Sometimes you go out meals. All like today, you find men going out meals until tonight. And that is only because of dedication and love for the instrument. And for steel band, McDay will do this. If you don't have that love, you can never be a good steel band player. I've been playing with Bitcoin Peter since the age of 11 years. I've been invaders for quite a while. I've visited a few countries with invaders, toured to Cuba, Nicaragua, Barbados, and other countries along with the invaders band. The invaders band is a professional steel band right now. You see with the invaders, we have members ranging from the age of 11 years old up to members going up to 35. In I, as a, as you see, I'm a professional tenor pamplier for Spanish, you see. Um, now, I, I joined the 
Bitcoin Vaders for the past roughly 10 years now, right? And how I see our position, our competition so far in this upcoming competition, the upcoming Thursday, is that right now I ain't see they got any band that got our standard because first thing, the Bitcoin Vaders have been a band always competitive, always playing. It never out the members, they're always playing for the past you see, 50, 25 years, roughly 25 to 50 years, we've been competitive, we've been active. You now we got other banks coming up, who we know that all of them coming out to beat invaders, but they can never get the opportunity because we are practicing hard, we training hard, and we looking for professional standard. This year, they've chosen land of our birth, some by a man who arranged a token for two girls who accessed the kind of Many people have said it is a difficult tune to arrange for Steve Band, and it is. But what I have done with it, and what most of the arrangers will be doing, you play straight the first time, more or less from the copy, so you know that you, what the tune is all about. And then we've done a march in a minor key, and then we go into a kind of Viennese waltz with a little variation itself, and then we go into a calypso, and then we end with a big finale.
In second position, we have the Ghana Police Band with 224 points. And the Band of God Forest was Bitcoin Invaders with 247 points. I'm the blazing fire. Now, I got two bad tunes for Mashimani, which is Dorothy and Plenty Years. Well, um, my name is Black Prince. And um, for this Mashimani Calypso competition, I have two very nice tunes. One of them are Bubbly, title of Bubbly, and the other one is Something Dangerous. No? Well, right now my name is Patricia Caesar, known as Lady Explainer. My two tunes that I would be doing this year is Bingy the Pussy for Master Money and I Come Out to Mash. I'm very confident the Calypso that I have, I believe I'm going to make it this year. I don't think I'll be going for a second place this year, like the past four years. So I feel there's two very good tunes I'm having. Both of them are test pieces and I'm feeling that I'm going to win. My great feelings about this year is that I shall be 1987 Calypso Monarch. Me personally, I feel like the greatest Calypsonian in Guyana. And the only thing that's stopping me being one of the greatest Calypsonians in this world is like money and studios and these sort of things. Because I believe no Trinidad, no Trinidadian Calypsonian or Barbadian Calypsonian got nothing what I ain't got. And I in the arena of the 1987 Calypso contest, we bring to you our first contestant tonight, the business of Calypso, arriving from right across all the 10 regions. Now to the capital city, 20 years with the blazing fire. Put your hands together for the blazing fire. Boom, bang. Uh -huh. In 53, the first general election, the first premier was Dr. Chedi Jagan, the minister of education was Lyndon Fox Burnham, and they swore allegiance to the British crown. You can be sure that they did not shelter them for long. Cause by the ninth day of October, which was only six months later, Winston Churchill, he take over, yes, he expelled them from power and suspended the country's constitution. Hey, me, plenty years, we independent and free. Plenty years, now we living in harmony. 
No more colonial slavery. Man, we molding we destiny. Plenty years, we independent and free. If I am to come again, I don't want to be a human. I don't want to come again to be exploited by man. Let me stay far away. No contact with man at all. Too much a damn advantage, especially when you're small. Rich man living at his leisure, while the poor man feeling the pressure. I don't want to stay on earth, in cooler under the dirt. So if not a dove or bush turkey, God bought the leaf and turkey study. Just leave me in the cemetery, I'd rather be a zombie. My friend in the cemetery was a guy by the name of Chubby. He had good ability and he was a handsome zombie. He made a wrong decision to come back again as a human. He thought he would be a man, but he come back here as a woman. So no, 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 not me. I don't want to come as a human. I don't want to be a victim of no stupid man. No man ain't gonna treat me cruelly. Bust up my eyes and bruise up me knee. So leave me in the cemetery. I'd rather be a zombie. Contestant number five from the Garden City in the capital city of Georgetown for Master Manny 1987. The name is the Black Prince. Contestant number five, the song Bubbly. We're putting our hands together right across this beautiful, fully air conditioned stadium tonight. Fully, Guyana has got all the wonders in the world. You come to the national park, it's fully air conditioned. You don't have to turn on any switches, any knobs. We'd like to welcome our overseas visitors to the fully air-conditioned studio. Sorry, the arena. <laughs> this is time for the Black Prince, contestant number five. The song is called Bubbly. And of course, backing up the Yoruba singers. We'd like to remind you before that and more, a whole lot more, of the entry of Calypso, Calisonian uh, number five. The Black Prince. Let me hear you put your hands together for contestant number five. The Black Prince. 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 Black Prince. Black Prince. Black contestant number five. Bubbly. 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 
Bablin. This is the prince, the black prince. The prince, the black prince. The prince, the black prince. Entering to the arena with 175,000 pounds of pure solid Calypso. Calypso, Calypso, the black prince. Calypso, the black prince. Love me, 
They talk and they talk so like the Inga shit. But it's the same talk name that give me my fame. Don't worry about me, cause my mind is free. Whenever I open my mouth, everybody must feel happy. So when they talk about soca, yes, I got real class. When it comes to break dance, I could do it fast. I'm getting old, yes, but don't tell me so. Soca is my line anytime. Anybody can try guy mine. But granny fit, granny fit. But granny fit, granny fit. Granny fit, granny fit. Unless she fit, fit, fit. and envy they does want a dollar from the same old lady but class is just real class whether young or old this lady was born to sing there's no substitute for this girl so when they talk about soca yes i got real class when it comes to break dance i could do it fast i get in old yes but don't tell me so. Soca is my line anytime. Anybody can try guy mine. But granny fit, granny fit. Granny fit, granny fit. Granny fit, granny fit. fit, fit. Granny fit, fit, fit. Granny fit, granny fit. Granny fit, granny fit. song singer, I am always the best. With just Calypso and Soka, you can guess the rest. Don't worry your head, people, over me. When a person gone, maybe history must remember me. For when they talk about Soka, yes, I got real class. When it comes to break dance, I could do it fast. I'm getting old, yes, but don't tell me so. Soca is my line anytime. Anybody can try guy mine. So granny fit, granny fit. Granny fit, granny fit. Granny fit, granny fit. You know she fit, fit, fit. Granny fit, granny fit.
decisions has made about four years back, which we won with, and we decided to keep the arrow up. Now our captain told us, how long the flag's up, we are above. And when it's dropped, we're down. So we decide to keep our head up. So we are the Golden Arrows. Buried in different territories, but the masquerade is spread throughout the West Indies in different forms. And here, it took the form, it, it has strong British um, influences. We have the fife, which is a, an English musical instrument really, the kettle drum, and the boom, which is, which is the, the, the tenor drum that they, they mar English troops march with. You have the long lady who is dressed in English costume, usually a white masked lady. It's a costume about eight feet high. You have um, the mad bull. These two are images which are used here also as part control figures. They keep the crowd out of the way. The masqueraders go around from house to house. In old days, around Christmas time, they would actually send a visiting card, say the so-and-so masquerade band is coming to your house, make sure you're in. And you throw coins. There are about eight or nine definite steps that they do. Now, this part of it, the ceremonial part, comes from mainly Nigeria. I think it is Yoruba tribe, but I'm not an authority on that. They're from various West African tribes, where the masquerade is a highly secret society. But what has remained is the secular part of it, the ceremonial part of it, little bits of the ceremonial part with no religious uh, uh, attachments, I should say. So you have these seven or eight steps, and uh, the way they pick up the coin is one way. A lot of interesting things about it. The masquerader must smile because he's begging you for money. So you always find their eyes upturned, looking at the window tops to see who's going to throw the money. And then they pick it up in a certain way. And for a good pickup, you see, you'll get another coin thrown. But if you smile, you're making money. So it's, uh, the little traditions like that you have to know. And it's very intricate. It's been going here for well over 150 years. What has been left to us now is only one or two of many costumes they used to have. Um, again, they, um, there's a breastplate, there's a skirt, there's a complete costume called Highland Lassie. There was used to be one called the, 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 the Navy. There was a completely naval one. See, so that you had a, this double thing, taking elements from the British, who were the rulers at the time, and mixing them in with completely African dancing and movements. And this is what to me makes my spirit interesting. Plus the fact, of course, it's fun. <laughs>
the wire done for the glass wall, for the mirror wall between the cockpit and the person carrying the spacecraft. Just wired. So the last thing you do is just put on that. Underneath that, you're going to write floor to be put in. Because there's the two last things going to be done. At the same time that is being done, I would like the bottom to be wired for covering. For covering. So that's the last thing we're going to do. But at least the wire going to be there. See, the legs is what I want to make that those legs be for. So let me start decorating them. Just cut them out and just let somebody start decorating them. How you can push them and shove them in, you can shove them from outside or however whatever mechanism right. you can use. Well, being worried about the part you think you won't be outside now, right? Right. That's what I'm saying. Worry about the outside now. My name is John Fernandes, mash designer. And I have been working in doing costumes for about 10 years. Uh, this year we are putting out two individuals, king and queen, two individuals, uh, smaller, male and female, which is called as individual male, individual female, and king and queen. I'm building five bands, one for Ghana Airways, one for GA, which is uh, GEC, another one for COFA, which is all the financial institutions, uh, GNTC, and the armed forces, joint services, which will be about 500 strong. In the background, you can see a flying saucer, which we are doing for the joint services, King. Uh, across, you can see some, a chariot with horses, which is being wire-bended, and it's now being decorated. That's before GEC, Chariots of Fire. Uh, the costume behind would be for GNTC, the Queen, which is uh, True Colors of Unity and Development. And um, here we have, if you would like to look at that, is individual female for just Cleopatra for the Kofa group. The chariots is chariots of fire, which I told you earlier, mm -hmm. for GEC. We plan to light that costume of fire on stage. To so light it to fire. Off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On fire. We bought in from New York an asbestos suit which um, the guy would be wearing and he would display the costume and just before he comes off the stage he would light himself a fire. But I like a lot of innovations. Especially that effects. certainly is innovative. That yeah. certainly has a special effect. Yeah. So that's for sure. Uh, there was a concern about uh, sizes of costumes. So, does that concern you at all or are you just going with what you create? I, I am against that. How could someone uh, limit the capability of a designer? stating how high, how wide, how many wheels, or whatever it is. I think that's limiting, uh, limiting a designer. Um, our costumes don't ex exceed three wheels, and uh, they shouldn't also exceed a certain width and height kind of thing, because they, tend, they then begin to go into the uh, concept of a float. There's one particular designer in Guyana who has been um, straying into this float concept and building massive costumes, which in fact is more, um, more of a float than a costume. I feel a costume should be worn um, to a great extent by the person who is um, playing it and should be able to move in it freely. I would like to see us build more body costumes where we don't have to rely on wheels. Well, I got involved in, in Mashramani since back in, way back in 1974 and uh, I started out by building floats and after three years of four years of float building and running uh, successively all four years I was persuaded to go into costume designing which really was not my um, I had very little experience in costume designing but with um, the help of a, another leading designer of that that used to be in Guyana um, David Lani I decided to you know branch off and try my hand at it and uh, I've been kind of designing costume bands ever since then. Um, we're doing uh, the games we play, and it's all to do with indoor and outdoor games. So we're going to be featuring things like football, cricket, basketball on the outdoor side, and badminton, dominoes, 
uh, playing cards, that kind of thing on the indoor side of it. So, how did you come about this? Well, every year we we have to come up with a, with a fresh theme, eh? and um, this year they are the government is kind of featuring um, fitness and sport as as a national theme, and we thought we could just pick it up from there and expand it. Um, it's something I enjoy. I like you know being around the making of costumes. Although I'm not too much, uh, I don't get too much involved in the, the making. I like the design aspect of it, um, and it's interesting to see the things you know that you design come to life by people who um, who have that special talent. <laughs>
coming in drunk from ashram and eat. I tell them your body party like fire. Man is one fantastic spree. Man, I can see them guy and his flung sin. Everybody masquerading in tongue. Like a sake winky, the only bouncing. Up and down, down, down. Here a man, by the van, with a bass in the hand. Where the rain fall in the sun shining, we go mash down, down. Like a sadie pen, shall we whining, we go mash down, down. I go meet you down by the junction, we go mash down, down. I mean, don't care who say we rock, shall we go mash down, down.